Hello and welcome to a brand new series on Drape. In this series, we will try to build a landing page from scratch. For you to understand and keep track, we will drop step-by-step -step modularized videos sequentially. After this whole series, we expect you will know most of the basics to explore and build websites with Droip yourself. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. As you can see, we already have a Figma design here to develop. Like every other landing page, we have a navbar, a hero section followed by some more sections, a newsletter or contact section, and a footer. This series will cover how to replicate this design with Droip and make it responsive. So first things first, let's inspect the design. We can see the navbar is layered above the hero section. It has three components here, the logo, menu items as link blocks, and a clickable button. In Droip, we also have the pre-built navbar as a component in the elements panel where you will notice a similar structure. In this specific video, we will simply create our navbar from scratch. Now in our blank editor, let's first assign the breakpoint according to the design and it's 1920 pixels. The plan is to make a section for creating the navbar and another section right after that to place the contents of the hero section. The standard convention is to rename each element according to its purpose and set the class simultaneously to hold their styles and actions. So in our navbar section, let's add a container which will work as the nav wrapper. This container element has a default margin and padding, which we would like to keep in this design. And let's set a new class, nav wrapper, and set the max width to 1677 pixels. In the design, the width was 1629 pixels, but as we already mentioned, the default class for the container has some padding, thus we adjusted the max width. Also, let's set the width to 100%, and the height to 59 pixels and also let's give the nav wrapper a top margin of 40 pixels cool so it's a bit difficult to inspect the nav bar let's just add a temporary background to our nav wrapper the hex code could be cceff1 okay in the design we have the three parts of the nav in a horizontal orientation so let's first take two divs one for the logo and the other for menu items and lastly a button let's reorder them a bit and also rename them and assign the corresponding classes now what we want to do is make the nav wrapper have the structure flex having the flex direction row as it is and ln items center and justify contents to space between there we go now let's make the logo in the logo wrapper let's add a heading element naming it logo and assign a class logo as well so according to the design the font is cyan and we can see the font size line height and many more let's do that one by one first let's install the font from the cloud type here cyan there it is and install now let's set the font to cyan, font size 34.42 pixels and the line height has the same value, font style extra bold, let's capitalize, centered and the text color to white. So the design has outlines and shadows for the logo. Let's just go to advanced font editor, text stroke, 2 pixels black and the class that is holding the styles for the logo we will find that in the components. There we go. Let's add the text shadow with a Y offset value of 6.885 pixels and the color is black. With that, we are done making the logo. Cool. Next, for the menu wrapper, we will have a link block and a paragraph element within. The plan here is to edit and design the first link block and then copy and paste to make the others. As a result, all the link blocks will hold the same class with designs and actions. So let's first give the menu wrapper a max width and height of 443 pixels and 59 pixels accordingly and set the width to 
give it a wide background and a border of 2 pixels with a border radius of 29.5 pixels. Before giving the mini wrapper any structure, let's just style the link block content. We will need the font Inter to be installed, so let's just install it again. Set the font size to 16 pixels, line height to 24 pixels and letter spacing to 1.28 pixels. Capitalize, centered and advanced settings, then no text decoration. Now we also want when the links will be hovered, there will be underlines as shown in the designs. So let's expand the class manager, select status hover for the link blocks class and on hover, the text decoration will be set to underline. When there is the status none, we can see there is no underline. Let's copy the link block and paste it under the mini wrapper. So let's select mini wrapper and structure it as flex, direction low and align items flex start and justify content center and add a horizontal gap to 40 pixels. Cool. Now let's just rename the items and we are good to go. Next, we will design the button here. First, we will detach the default class and set a new one, let's say button. Now let's add some padding for the top and bottom to 14 pixels and for left to right 30 pixels. Giving our button a pink shade and the hex code is FF90E8. Adding a black border of 2 pixels and a border radius of 32 pixels. Also, the button needs a box shadow of 2 pixels in offset X and Y. And let's update the text. Cool. Now let's change the typography. Font enter, size 18 pixels, line height 24 pixels, um, font width semi bold, and in value it's 600, and also capitalize. We are almost done with the navbar. Let's just give our hero section a height and a background. And you can see how the nav section and hero section are stacked. What we want is to keep the hero section below and the nav section above. To do that, we will simply give the nav section a position of absolute and set left right to 0%, top bottom to auto, and it's centered and layered above the hero section. Now, fast forward, let's make the drop down layout as the design. First, we will take this link block for pages and duplicate the class name. By doing so, this new class will hold the previous style and now when we will add the new styles to it, it won't affect the other link blocks. Long story short, we want to explicitly change some structure for this link block pages and want others to keep intact. In Drape Element Panel, you will also find a pre-built drop-down component. But again, we will try to make one here from the start. The idea is that we will keep the link pages and the down arrow is VG inside a div block and the contents that will drop on the trigger will be kept inside another div block. And the total thing will have the parent link block 3. Let's just give the new trigger div a dimension of 152 by 287 pixels, a background color of white, a 2 pixel black border, and a radius of 16 pixels. And making the position absolute. Now let's structure the down arrow and pages. Let's flex them and direction row, align and justify to the center, and a flex gap of maybe 6 pixels. Let's give the SVG a size of 24 by 16 pixels, like that. And let's just also give the top margin of 2 pixels. Looks good. So we will make a minor adjustment here. As you cannot insert a link block within a link block, so we will just migrate the elements of link block 3 to a new div, let's say pages, and then delete the link block 3. Also, it was holding a class that was link block dupe, and let's just assign that for this new pages div. Cool, all set. Let's add a link block and a paragraph element within the trigger div. And the div will have a right padding of 16 pixels and a top padding of 12 pixels. Reset the default margins for the paragraph. 
Now the link blocks here will hold a top and bottom padding of 4 pixels, a right padding of 10 pixels and left padding of 16. And then change the typography, font enter, size 12 pixels, line height 24 pixels, letter spacing um, 0.96 pixels, let's capitalize. Now you can see we need a bit of styling coherence here. So let's just add some margin here. Also, let's add the hover effect by setting the status in the class manager. Status hover and the text decoration underline. And with that, we have all the components ready for our navbar. Our next task would be to make the dropdown interactive. This means when we hover over the page link or the down arrow, the trigger list will come downwards and when the hover is not in action, it will shrink. You can keep on trying to solve this till the next video. Stay tuned and see you in the next one.